Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be going over a technical demo introducing a new technology, the Elastic Stack, and talking about magic. Let's get started. First thing first, a little update. I recently become a developer advocate for Elastic, so that is why we're going to be covering this technology a lot more on this channel. What is Elastic, you might wonder? Well, Elastic or Elastic Search as it is in the name, is a search engine that can be used by both companies, but mostly developers, since it's an open source technology, to create search applications. There are different ways that you can use this for different kinds of projects. There's a lot of applications within observability, such as monitoring models and logs and events. There's also security applications and just search applications that can be done with AI. There's a lot of vector search and embeddings that are out of the box, which we'll be covering later. But for now, we're going to go over the basics, which is the Elasticsearch and Kibana combo, also known as ELK. Now, on the other side, if you've ever seen any of my presentations or videos before, you probably know that I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. So you know I have to use Harry Potter data to start this journey. And I found these data sets on Kaggle which are a collection of Harry Potter characters that have been stored with various attributes and information about them. So what we're going to do is put these things together and create a Harry Potter character index that allows us to search through characters based on different properties and get insights about the relations between them. Let's get started with that. All the materials that I'll go over today have been posted on my GitHub, so you can follow along or recreate this application if you want. What we'll do is we'll first start with the data, um, clean it up a bit so we can use it better for our use case, and for that I'm using Python, and then we're going to be moving into the Elastic environment. You can install it locally or use it in the cloud, and then you have access to this browser interface that allows you to do various things with your data such as visualize it, so we'll make a nice dashboard of Harry Potter characters, um, discover it better so you can make a few queries and look through the data based on different properties. And then finally, we're going to be creating the search application that allows us to make different calls to the Elastic API and get back results. So you get a pretty good idea of how you could use this with other projects as well. So to begin, we're starting with a Python notebook. For this, you need to create a Python environment. I recommend a virtual environment in which you install your packages. For this case, we just need pandas. We're getting the data that we has been posted on Kaggle, and it looks like this. It's just a little bit dirty, so to say, so we need to do a bit of data manipulation. We're removing the unknown values. We're getting rid of special characters in there, and we are Streamlining it, streamlining it into a clean version that we can then use for our application. After that, you're going to your Elastic browser interface and from here you can get started with either sample data or our own files. So we're actually going to upload our characters data set in here. You can see that it shows up and there's some initial insights that are gathered from it, but we're not really getting the names of the columns, which we for sure have. So we're gonna override the settings and say we have a header and that should automatically clean up the data for us. We have some initial insights from it. It's not so important for now. We're happy with this, so we're importing our data. And this is where we're creating an index. So that's how Elasticsearch works. Basically, you have an index in which you add documents. In this case, each document will be a row in our table or a Harry Potter character. And based on this index, you're able to search through them based on the different properties or columns. This is a different way to work with data than putting it into a classic database, so to say. It is still storing it, but it's optimizing it so that you can search through it and dynamically explore it and bring it up. So this is some new exciting stuff. We're going to create an index name, uh, something like Harry Potter characters, and import our data in. Now let's take a look at the analytics. There's different things that you can do in here. We'll go over machine learning a little bit later, but let's start with the basics. Starting with dashboards. You can create new dashboards or edit any existing ones. If you've worked with a BI tool before, they're all pretty similar and quite intuitive. 
you can add different types of images or models or things you've created somewhere else into this dashboard to make it look like you want but mostly you will be creating visualizations and you do these by just dragging the available fields into here for example we can look at the different hair colors of people we automatically get a type of graph that best fits our data but you can choose from the various different options if you want to change it you can also combine it with other types of data and see how they interact together. So for example, the house and the hair color, we can choose other suggestions. Uh, we can rearrange things if we want. So let's say house has priority. We see all the redheads within Gryffindor. That's our Weasley population right here. And you can always decide to make different changes to your data. Choose the axes, choose the different colors you name it, you can then add it to your dashboard. So in here, for example, we have the different blood status within the houses. We have the known or unknown Patronuses, the gender wizards, and also all of these are interactive. So I can choose Gryffindor and see the rest of the graphs and how they compare for the Gryffindor population. Or you can choose to only look at the pure bloods and where they're split in the other graphs. So you can interact with this and get quite some nice insights as well. And to keep exploring this, we'll then move on to the discover section. And here we can see all the results from our database based on all the available fields that we can search with. For example, we can look for something like hair color, I don't know, red. And surprisingly, there's quite a lot of hits because we have a lot of Weasleys in the database. We can also use different operators to narrow down our results. For example, look for people who are currently students and see the people who are currently in school from the Weasley family and so on. So this is already kind of a search index, but we can take it a little further and create more complex queries. For that, we'll be taking a look at the development tools and this is the console where you'll spend most of your time. We already have a few queries in here, which have all been put in the various instructions in GitHub. Basically, this is how we make API calls to the Elastic Engine, and then we get results here on the right. So we find the number of hits that match people who are loyal to Hogwarts, and then we can go over all the documents, or in this case, Harry Potter characters that came up. There's different types of searches that we can do and we can combine things with operators here as well. However, we may have noticed in the previous steps that the data, although has been cleaned from a Python standpoint, it's not as optimized as it can be for the Elasticsearch engine and its particularities. So what we first had to fix was our mapping. What this means is we look at the type that each of the columns or the features has been saved as. We have keyword that kind of works like categorical data in this case, everything is case sensitive and only the answers in that keyword will be searched for in the rest of the database. Or we can have text, which allows us to have um, a more long string in there. In this case, that probably shouldn't happen for birth. That should be a date, just like death should also be a date rather than a keyword. But we have features such as job or skills that were actually pretty long descriptions in our initial database. So those ones we want to keep in there so that we can search for the various words that show up at a later point. This is a case of natural language processing, so it allows us to go a little bit deeper with the use of AI rather than only search for keywords, which we can do in pretty much any application. But with Elasticsearch, we can also search within the bigger text fields. And you'll see in later videos, we can use different scores to prioritize certain results over others. So what we have to do, and you can follow along in this notebook, is clean up our mapping and create one that makes more sense for our use case. So we have the dates in here, we have keywords for categorical data, like house can really only be four values, but there are things like Patronuses that are unique to each wizard, so we can have a bit of room in there or make it a dynamic field that can change over time. Once we fix these up, we can re-index our data by transferring it over to a new index with the correct mapping, and then the search should be even easier. 
And for our use case, just to get started, we're going to be creating different queries that become more and more specific over time, starting with what are some Quidditch players or people interested in Quidditch within our data set. If we run this query in our console, we'll see 29 results and we have different uh, characters from the series that are either working in a Quidditch team or are a Quidditch commentator perhaps, or just a fan of Quidditch. So if we want to keep it a little more specific, we can first narrow it down by Gryffindors. So we can add that query in here. And here you see we have a more complex query that checks for various things that are true, such as we must match any of these words in these different fields, and we must also match the Gryffindor house as our keyword into the results. This narrows it down to 16 values. We can go further. We're looking for the birth year, and you see here we can use a different type of range query, which allows us to find all people that have been born later than a particular age. However, we also have the must not, which means we're looking for everyone who has been born before that date. And that narrows it down to 11 Quidditch players from the Harry Potter generation. And then finally, we're also throwing in a filter, which means uh, we only keep the values that have a positive response to that filter. In this case, we're back to the hair color red. So if we run this final query, we have three people that have been born after 1980, our redhead, Gryffindor, and play Quidditch. So there you have it. We've gone over a few steps exploring some of the basic tooling within Elastic. We've explored Harry Potter characters, made dashboards from them, and started to search through the different entries in our index. We can expand on this a lot more in the future. For example, you can use Python throughout to interact with the Elastic search engine so you don't have to use the console or copy different queries in. And you can also expand it with different kinds of technologies like machine learning and generative AI and vector search. And we'll do that in the later steps. Hope you enjoy this. Thanks for watching.